All right, well, we're going to get back in action here with another presentation, and this time we're going to talk about states of matter and how substances can change from one state to another with uh, a changing of energy, and we'll get into that right now. So we're going to basically be dealing with the three main states of matter. There are five, but we're going to deal with the basic three, and I'm sure you're all familiar with solids, liquids, and gases. Now I've used metals for all of these. So for solid, I've got some gold bars there. For liquid, I've got some uh, liquid mercury. And you might wonder why I have a, a light bulb there. This kind of light bulb is actually called a mercury vapor light bulb. So there's actually vaporized mercury inside that light bulb. So mercury as a gas. And uh, I'm not going to get into the physics of how that works, but I just want you to realize that uh, quite often when we think of states of matter, we go to water. It always seems to be water. Okay, we talk about ice, we talk about liquid water, we talk about steam. So I want you to realize that most pure substances will undergo these changes as well, not just water. So uh, we'll try to avoid using water as an example, but I'm sure I won't be able to avoid it totally. We'll see what happens. So let's start by talking about the behavior of the particles uh, when they're in different states of matter. So we'll start with solid. And here I've got a little animation. Uh, and the little red dots there represent uh, particles in a solid. And you can see that these particles are packed tightly together. OK, so uh, there is no room between the particles. It can't be pushed together anymore. And they're connected, so they can't really be uh, pulled apart either, because the particles are sort of attracted to one another. There's what's called an intermolecular bond. Now, that's not as strong as a bond that's between atoms in a compound, but uh, this, this bond does sort of keep these particles attracted to one another. So since these particles are packed tightly together and they can't be pushed together or pulled apart, they have a definite volume. Now you can see that the particles are sort of sitting there vibrating in place, and this is uh, obviously quite exaggerated, but uh, you'll get the you get the idea. So they're vibrating in place, but they don't move around one another. So the particles do not move relative to one another. And what I mean by that is, if we look at the top, the particle in the top left-hand corner. Uh, it stays where it is. It doesn't move around. You can see these other three particles that are near it. They stay in the same position relative to one another. They don't move around one another. Okay, and So because of that, solids have a definite shape. So this definite shape is because the particles do not move around one another. So when we take a look at liquids, it's kind of similar to a solid in that those particles are packed tightly together. So again, they're packed really tightly together, just like they were in a solid, so they have a definite volume. They can't be compressed, and they can't be expanded. But one thing they do differently than a solid is those particles do move around one another. And since they do that, they take the shape of the container that they're in, so they do not have a definite volume. And now we'll look at gases, and they're quite different from solids and liquids. Uh, you can see the particles are kind of zipping all over the place, and there's space between them. So it's very different. Uh, the particles move around a lot like liquids, but uh, they change position relative to one another. But unlike liquids, there's sort of there's space between those particles. So the particles actually spread out as far as they can go, so they actually take the shape of the entire container that they're stored in. And they also take the volume of that container. Now if we could compress this uh, container or make it smaller, the gas particles would still spread out and fill up the container, but they would just get a little closer together. And likewise, if we were to able to make this container larger and expand the container, those particles would move throughout that container and fill it up. So. Uh, the volume of a gas is not constant. You can change it by changing the pressure on it or, you know, basically the size of the container that it's in. And there are a few uh, famous gas laws that we're not going to get into, but they do explain the relationship between 
uh, the pressure on a gas, and the volume of it. So now that we have an idea of how these particles behave, let's talk about how we can uh, change the behavior of particles. So when the particle's behavior changes, the substance will change state. So we can change the state of matter through the use of what's called thermal energy. And what thermal energy is, it's just a, it's the energy that a substance has because of the motion of its particles. So it also can be thought of as heat energy. It's often referred to as that. And we can think of it as the faster the particles are moving, the hotter the substance is. So when we heat substances up, the particles begin to move more and they move faster, so they have a higher thermal energy. And if we heat them up enough, they're going to change from one state to another. So if we look at the animations that we had before, here's that solid, and that substance is at a low temperature. But if we are to raise the temperature of that substance to a high temperature, the particles move around a lot faster, and this would represent a gas. So that same substance at a higher temperature, the particles are moving faster, has more thermal energy, and it's in a different state. So let's take a look at an animation of uh, heating a substance up and changing it from one state to another. So here we have some particles uh, and we're going to increase the thermal energy and it's going to cause a change in state. So you see the little blue bar rising there and uh, as that rises the temperature it's representing the temperature rising. So watch the particles move a little bit faster and pretty soon they're going to sort of break free of one another. And once they do that, melting will start to occur. And you'll notice that when it reaches the melting point, right about here, the temperature stops changing. Okay, And the particles go into a liquid state. So they're bro they've broken free of one another and they're moving around one another. And now that it's all liquid, the temperature can in, uh, continue to rise. And once it reaches the boiling point, you'll notice the temperature stops again and the particles begin to break free of the liquid and rise up into a gas state. And that temperature again stays there until all of the liquid is gone and it's all a gas. And the reason for the, the temperature staying the same is it would be impossible to have a, a solid at a temperature higher than its melting point. So until all of that solid is gone that substance is going to stay right at the melting point. And once it, all of the, the entire substance reaches the melting point, it would be all liquid. So some of that substance begins to become a gas, but until all of it becomes a gas, the temperature can't rise past that boiling point because there's still some liquid there that hasn't gone above the boiling point. It's a little weird, but I think... Uh, some of the activities that we did in class would probably help clarify that a little bit. So let's take a look at some of the types of changes that uh, matter can go through. The first one we'll talk about is freezing. I think we're all familiar with that. It's where a liquid becomes a solid. So it's important to remember what has to happen for that to occur is you need to decrease the thermal energy of the substance. So we're decreasing the motion of the particles until they're, they slow down enough and they don't move around one another freely anymore. Another type of change that we looked at was melting. So here we have a solid becoming a liquid. So we increase the thermal energy of the particles in a solid and it causes them to uh, break free of one another and move around the container a little bit more. Vaporization is what occurs when a liquid becomes a gas. So we increase the thermal energy of the particles enough in that substance where they break free of one another and come out of the liquid state and the particles begin to fly around one another. And condensation is where a liquid becomes a gas. Now the picture that we have here is something that's probably familiar to everyone. You know when you get out of the shower uh, usually the mirror is covered in water. The reason for that is when you're in the shower you're, you've got hot water and some of that hot water becomes a vapor and it's floating around in the air in the bathroom and when it gets near the glass of the mirror the glass is cold 
So it cools that gas down enough where uh, the particles become a liquid again. So what you end up having on the on your mirror there is a, a sort of a sheet of liquid water. So we've decreased the thermal energy of that gas to make it become a liquid. Now the next two types of changes might not be quite as familiar to you. There's something called sublimation and that's when a solid becomes a gas. So we increase the thermal energy of a solid enough and quick enough where it will become a gas right away so it doesn't go through that melting stage. Uh, not too many substances do this very easily uh, but one that you're probably very familiar with is something called dry ice. I'm sure you've seen that before. What dry ice is, it's frozen carbon dioxide. So carbon dioxide undergoes sublimation relatively easily. So what ends up happening to this frozen carbon dioxide is the particles that are on the surface of the solid break free of the solid quickly and escape as a gas without going into a liquid state. Now I referred to this as dry ice before and the reason I referred to it as dry ice was because that's exactly what it is. It's ice that doesn't melt. It just turns directly into a gas. So it sublimes would be the word. So you can pack things in, in dry ice and rather than the ice melting and becoming a liquid and making a mess out of everything, it just turns directly into a gas and everything stays dry, hence dry ice. Now the opposite of sublimation is something called deposition. It's also referred to as crystallization. This is where a gas becomes a solid. So you've got a rapid decrease in thermal energy. And again, you might not think you're very familiar with it, but if you've ever woken up on a cold morning and seen this on your window, that's what happened. There was water vapor in the air, either inside or outside of your house, and it got to a cold window, and rather than sticking to the window and becoming a liquid and then becoming a solid, it went directly into the solid state. So now we need to talk about the output page for this uh, presentation. What I want you to do is I want you to create a diagram that shows the different changes from one state of matter to another. And again, we're only going to deal with solid, liquid, and gas. So I want you to you know, come up with a diagram, and I'll give you sort of a little, uh, a very, very basic version of what I think you might come up with. And because, you know, I want you to do your work and be creative. So maybe you could have solid, liquid, and gas. And, you know, maybe you use images for this. And what you could do is sort of draw lines between these. Okay, and what I've done here is I've used blue lines to represent decreasing thermal energy and red lines to represent increasing thermal energy. So maybe on those lines you can actually put what that change would be. So where I've got the red line going from solid to liquid, maybe I could label that melting, because that would be the phase change that occurs uh, when the thermal energy is increased of a solid when it becomes a liquid. I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, we can talk about it in class tomorrow, or we can use Edmodo or whatever else we want to do to uh, get this thing done.